With the pandemic, disinfection strategies rightfully went to the forefront for EMS and medical providers. Many people don't realize, but for six years, Fraser has placed UVC bulbs right in its plenum to disinfect air as it passes through our HVAC system. Our AC is so robust, it can move the entire volume of air in this patient care module at least once a minute. So it's important that that air passes past these bulbs. Just like your filters and any other critical equipment on your ambulance, this requires a daily check to make sure it's functioning. And then we recommend that the lamps be changed out at least annually as a part of your annual maintenance schedule. It's very easy to check. All, all a crew member needs to do is look up here for the glow and you can actually do that from the captain's chair. It's, it's unmistakable and, and extremely easy to do. Replacement of our UVC bulbs is simple. You just remove this small access panel and inside is the UVC bulb assembly. As you know, Fraser makes world-class equipment. All equipment, however, requires daily checks and of just a little bit of maintenance. Our air conditioning system, which is world renowned, is no different, but fortunately, it's extremely easy to take care of. For our customers, really, it's just a matter of daily, weekly, and monthly checks. Take, for example, the, uh, the filter. Our filters are easily accessible without tools, right here. And this is a filter that you can buy at your local hardware store, uh, an 18 by 20. In fact, what's really nice is we recommend that you buy the inexpensive filters. Sometimes the expensive uh, 3M filters that are really thick, uh, they will cut down on the airflow to your HVAC system. These systems move a ton of air. Therefore, it, we need a filter that the air can easily get through. And that's this. It's as easy as popping the, um, the clips dropping it in and closing the door. That's it. We recommend you do that at least monthly. Also, if you have a decontamination process and you transport uh, COVID positive cases or cases that are of concern of any infectious disease, we recommend that you change out your AC filters as a part of your decon. And the good news again is it is very inexpensive. Hey all it's Adam with Fraser. Uh, we're going to do a quick tutorial on the care and maintenance of the Fraser air conditioner uh, from the outside of the vehicle. Super simple. So first of all, when you're washing the vehicle, you, you want to try and stay away from pressure washers. So just use normal hose pressure washer when you're just washing the outside of the vehicle. When you get to the, the rear corner here where the air conditioner is, it's okay to actually spray off the coils there. Um, you know, as you're driving down the road, that accumulates, you know, road grime and debris and stuff like that. So to get some good clean water on there to rinse that off is, is okay. What you don't want to do is you never want to open this door and spray that compartment with the door open. So leave the door closed, spray this down with normal hose pressure water, you're good. What's going to happen to the water that goes in there, there's a pan underneath here inside the unit you don't see. That pan has, it's angled and it has two hoses connected to it. So the water runs into that pan, connects to those hoses, and as you're doing that, you should see water running through those hoses and dripping out down here onto the ground. So seeing that is good. If you don't see that, that indicates that there's a problem. Um, older Fraser units used to only have one hose. We went to two hoses for a reason because that one hose could get plugged up. We wanted a backup, but having two, you still want to check for that. If those ever get plugged, what's gonna happen is that water that gets into that pan is gonna fill up and it's gonna to have to go somewhere. So it'll either slosh out to the outside or it'll try to go to the inside. So if you ever see water draining to the inside of the vehicle from this back corner area, likely you have an issue with that pan being full, those hoses being plugged, and uh, that's not good. 
So what do we do about it? Super simple. You're gonna take that same hose pressure water that you had washing the vehicle. From the bottom side, you're gonna reach down here and you're just gonna find one of the hoses. You're gonna use low pressure, so you're not wanting to wanna to go full stream with it. You're gonna use low pressure, stick the nozzle right up to one of those tubes, gently spray that in there, and it's gonna back flush. So it's gonna spray water up into the pan. You'll stop spraying the water, and then you should see it flush out. You may have to do that one, two, three times, but eventually you'll see that flush out. That's good, that's what you're looking for. So seeing water dripping on the ground from the back here, that's a good sign. That means everything's working as it should. We're gonna do a quick tutorial on the Fraser thermostat. So it's pretty straightforward, it's pretty simple, but there's a few things that I wanna make sure you know about. Uh, the first of all is the thermostat itself. So over the years, we've used two different versions of thermostat. There's the current version, which you see here, it's kind of horizontal in orientation. The older version of thermostat looks similar, but it was vertical in orientation. They operate very similar, but you should know about the two different types so if you have any issues with that, when you call in and talk to our service department, they may ask you, is it the old vertical or the new horizontal style? So just keep that in mind. Operationally, they're very, very similar. So um, first is the mode. Uh, there's several settings here. I say keep it simple and you either pick cool or heat, whatever you're trying to do. You don't have to mess with auto or dehumidify, just pick cool or heat, pick the setting. Right now we're in off. So I can select cool or heat. Once that's done, then you wanna select the set point temperature. Uh, we recommend for normal operation, you keep it between 67 and 72 degrees. Um, we know there's some clinical reasons why you may wanna increase the heat higher for a trauma patient or maybe um, you know make it cooler back here for, for whatever reason. But for normal operation, keep it between 67 and 72 degrees. Once that part is done, then there's the fan speed. Uh, there is low, medium, high, and then you can actually pick auto, and auto will adjust the fan speed to try and get you to that set point temperature that we just set uh, as fast and efficiently as possible. So once you reach temperature, you may hear the fan drop down, and then when it needs to you know, reach another temperature, the fan may kick back up. Um, one other thing is, uh, this is actually where if there is ever an issue or a fault in the air conditioner, it'll actually display right here on this control panel. So um, it'll scroll a fault code. Uh, so you wanna make note of what that fault code is. Uh, for example, low pressure failure, we'll read LO, and then I think it's PS. So you'll note that down, you can call our service team and they can talk you what, uh, through what troubleshooting steps there is for that um, that certain fault code. Um, other than that, I mean, that's it. It's really, really simple to use. And uh, if you have any questions about it, you can reach us toll free, 888-372-9371, or you can reach the sales team at sales at fraserbuilt.com.